All right, here we go. How do we find the average rate of change over the interval from 0 to 4 of 4x squared plus 5x plus 6? Average rate of change. All right. So plug in the y values. If we plug in 0, we get 6. If we plug in 4, we get 16 plus 20, which is 36, plus 6, which is 42. Then we do the slope formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So then you get 36 over 4, which is 9. 9 is the average slope from 0 to 4 for that one. There's nothing instantaneous about it. Okay, It's just the average from one endpoint to the other endpoint. Okay, What's the instantaneous rate of change for this one? When you're doing instantaneous rate of change, you have to find the first derivative. So the first derivative of that function is what? So then we have to find the value of the first derivative at 4 to find the instantaneous rate of change at 4. So it's 3 times 4 squared minus 6 times 4 plus 7. 4 squared is 16 times 3 is 48 minus 24 plus 7 is 31. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? Yeah. Okay. How do you find the average rate of change from negative 2 to 2 for the following values? So what we're going to have is a table of values here given to you. So this doesn't look, you know, very nice. But really what's going on is there's a table of values. And if there's not a table given to you, you make a table of values. Hopefully you end up after the test looking like that guy. Okay, so how do you find the average rate of change for this? Slope. The slope from where to where? Okay, from there to there. So the slope, 12 minus negative five over two minus negative two. Could I go Negative 2 minus 2, or negative 5 minus 12 over negative 2 minus 2? Yes, I could. I get 17 over 4. The other way would also give me 17 over 4. Wait, what okay. was the other thing? Could I go um, negative 5 minus 12 over negative 2 minus 2? which would give me negative 17 over negative 4, which would be 17 over 4. Is that function continuous and differentiable? Is it both continuous and differentiable? Good question. Well, let's find the answer. What's the first step of finding that answer? Plug 1 into the first function. We get 1 plus 2, which is 3. Plug 1 into the second function. Is it continuous? Now, is it differentiable at that point? What's happening as it's coming into that point? So, we need to know the slope of this top one as it's going towards one from the left. So let's find the slope, let's find the first derivative at one for the top one. So the first derivative is? 2x plus 2. Which equals 2 plus 2, which equals 4. So the slope is 4 at 1 as it's coming in from the left. Let's find the first derivative at 1 from the right. 
4, which is 4. Is it differentiable? Yes. Yes. It's both continuous and okay, so differential. If those were different, it wouldn't be differentiable? Yes. It has to have the same slope coming from each direction. Okay? Graph, given a function in the tangent line, what's the value of the first derivative at 2? What do you think? Exactly. The slope of the line is 2. So the slope of the tangent line is the value of the first derivative at that point, okay? The value of the first derivative at a point is the slope of its tangent line. What's the equation of the tangent line at 2 for this function? What do we do first? Um, you find the first derivative. Sure, you can find the first derivative if you want to do that first. Then what do you do? A where? Into which function? The original? Both of them. Both of them. Good job, Ashlyn. You're so smart. If you plug it into the first one. Twelve minus twenty two is negative ten plus four is negative six. So your point is really 2, negative 6. If you plug your 2 into the first derivative, you get 12 minus 11, which is 1. Your slope is 1. Now you've got to find the equation of your tangent line. So you use point-slope form. y minus y1 equals slope times x minus x1. What? What? Three times two squared. Two squared is four. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I just didn't see the square and I got confused. Yep. You, you're great question. To make sure you're not confused. There we are. Y equals X minus eight. That's the equation of the tangent line. All right. Which point is the greatest? Um, the first derivative of at A, the first derivative of B, or first derivative at C? C, why? It has a higher rate of change, so it's a higher slope, so it is the greatest function at that point. Okay? What's an approximation for the first derivative at 4.5? What? What? 19.6? No. The first derivative at 4.5. What you do, and I don't always agree with this, is see there's only one space here and three spaces in between here. You still take what surrounds it and find the slope of that. Okay, find the slope of the two points around it. So you take 19.9 minus 18.9 over... 4.6 minus 4.2, which equals 1 over 0 0.4, which is 2.5. That's an approximate of the first derivative at 4.5. Where is this function 3x cubed plus minus 2x squared plus 5x minus 4 decreasing? Where is it a decreasing function? So where is the slope negative? Looks like it's from 2 to 4. Okay, from 2 to 4. If we want to figure that out for sure, we can take the first derivative 
and figure out where the first derivative is negative. Okay. How would you, how would we do that? Well, what's the first derivative of this? Okay. Then you'd graph that on your graphing calculator on y equals clear out what's there. And you said nine X squared minus six X plus five, right? 4x. Why did I say 6x? Graph. I wonder if I did something wrong here. I wonder what the original graph looks like. I was going to show you the cheat method, which is really not cheating if you're using logical processes to figure it out. All right, zoom. Standard, boom. Are you videotaping me? Yes, I am. Yeah, okay, never mind on that. Um, if they give you a graph, you just have to figure out where it's decreasing. If they didn't give you a graph, what you should do is find the first derivative and graph the first derivative Wherever the first derivative is below the x-axis, wherever the first derivative is negative, that's where the original function is decreasing because the first derivative is a slope, right? So wherever the slope is negative, below the x-axis, it's decreasing. Wherever it's above the x-axis, it's increasing. Okay? We'll talk more about slope and graphs in the future, but that's a good way of doing it. All right. What's the first derivative of this bad boy? Woo! First derivative of that. One x to the negative third. Minus. One tenth. One tenth x to the negative four fifths. Plus 8x to the negative third, because that was really x to the negative second. Oh, and don't look at that, because that was just rewritten to be that. Now, it's a multiple choice test. So let's say that wasn't written that way. It was written like this. This is the same as this. Okay, it's multiple choice. One of the answers will be there. Okay. What's the first derivative of this? You have to use the quotient rule. X times the first derivative of the ln of X, which is 1 over X minus the ln of X times the first derivative of X, which is? 1 over x squared. So if we simplify it, what's x times 1 over x? So it's 1 minus the ln of x over x squared. That is the first derivative of that function. What's the first derivative of the cosine of x at pi over 6? That's really what this is saying. Well, what's the first derivative of the cosine of x? Negative sine of x, so it's negative sine of pi over 6. So it's a negative, what's the sine of pi over 6? One. one half, so you're really at negative one half. Is the first derivative of the cosine at pi over 6. 
if you remember your cosine curve, your cosine curve starts at 1, and then at pi over 2, it's 0, pi, negative 1, and so on. So it has a negative slope at pi over 6. So this makes sense. Okay. Find the first derivative at 0 of that function. Find the first derivative at 0 of that function. Well, what's the first derivative of 4 cosine of x? What's the first derivative of 3e to the x? What's the first derivative of negative x squared times e to the x? Product rule. So it's plus negative x squared e to the x plus e to the x times a negative 2x. Now, you're supposed to find the first derivative at 0. What's the sign of 0? 0 times negative 4 is 0. Plus, what's e to the 0? No. 1. Because anything to the 0 bar is 1. What's 1 times 3? Three? 3. What's 0 squared? Zero. Times 1 is? Zero. What's uh, negative 2 times 0? So the answer to that is 3. Uh, what's the first derivative of this bad boy? Quotient rule, x minus 5 times 2x plus 2 minus x squared plus 2x minus 3 times 1 all over x minus 5 squared. So we should FOIL the first one. We FOIL it, we get 2x squared. Outers is minus 2x, inner, or outers is plus 2x, inners is minus 10x. 2 minus 10 is negative 8x. Minus 10. And then it's minus x squared minus 2x plus 3 over x minus 5 quantity squared. What's 2x squared minus x squared? Negative 8x minus 2x. Negative 10 plus 3. Will the top factor? No. So that's your first derivative. What's the first derivative of sine of x cotangent of x? Product rule. So it's sine of x. What's first derivative of cotangent of x? Negative cosecant square root of x plus cotangent of x times cosine of x. Now, what if they don't have it in this format? Well, you're going to have to change cosecant into what? 1 over sine squared. And cotangent into what? So a sine and a sine cancel there. So it's negative 1 over sine of x plus cosine times cosine is cosine squared of x over sine of x. If that's not the answer, what's cosine squared of x minus 1 equal to? Sine squared of x. So in the end, we end up with sine of x. What would have been a different way we could have done this problem? to get sine of x as our final answer. <laughs> yeah, change sine of x times cotangent of x to cosine over sine. Sines cancel, so we're just taking the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. Oop, this was negative sine.
Much easier, right? Yeah, so why would you do the other way? <laughs> hey, you suggested the product rule, so I just went with it. Yeah. Yeah, you went by the book, and we still got really close to the right answer. All right, at least it's multiple choice. But that's your little preview of a few of the questions. So, so uh, you need to make sure you do the Khan Academy test enough so you're comfortable with that.